Okay, so this video we are now ready to run the games program on our input file. So um, back in Secure Shell, here I am in my home directory at the prompt. So you can type CD, make sure you uh, get there. So type CD, there we go, PWD, Print Working Directory. Yep, there I am back home. Type LS, they're all my files. Okay, so we're ready to run the input file that we transferred in the last video. So it turns out I discovered that there was an error in that input file, so we need to go and fix that error. So probably the best thing for you to do is to um, open up Avogadro again on your computer, rebuild the input file in the way that I'll tell you about, and uh, then transfer it back over. But I'm going to show you how to do it the uh, sort of brute force way. So we're going to CD to the water directory, and I'm going to type CD water and then LS to find the file name. And now what we need to do is we're going to edit this file. So there is a text editor on most Unix and Linux systems called VI. So I'm going to type VI, that's a command, and then the name of the file that I want to edit, which is this one. So I'm going to select it and paste selection. Boom, there we go. And then hit enter. All right, so this brings up the file. And what I have now is a little cursor that I can move around using the arrow keys. So you see the little cursor, I can move it around using the arrow keys. Down here in the uh, bottom corner, um, I've got I've got uh, line numbers here and characters numbers. So this is telling you the line number four, and now we're on character number four, that kind of thing. So as we move around in the file using the arrow keys. So what we need to do is um, this symmetry bit right here that says that water is a C2V. Well, that is correct. But if we tell games that water is C2V, then when we specify the atom positions and coordinates, we just need to give it the coordinates of the symmetry unique atoms. So that would be, in the case of water, one oxygen, one hydrogen, and then it would figure everything else out on its own. So um, I can do that, um, but I'm going to go ahead and, um, because that won't work for some other things, I'm going to delete this entry. So we want to delete this entry and set it back at C1. So remember back in Avogadro when I set this, um, you'll want to undo that if you're following along with me. So go back and leave that at C1. So set that at C1. So what I'm going to do is delete. So I'm going to position the cursor over the N. And then wherever I am, if I type the X key, it will delete whatever is underneath the character that's underneath the cursor. So there we go. I'm deleting all of that stuff. There are other things that you can type that will delete whole words at a time and delete whole lines at a time and so forth. Anyway, so now I have deleted some things. Now I'm ready to insert the character. So if I type A, it will insert a character at the position of the cursor, and so the C will get moved over to the right. If I type A, then it's going to insert a character after the position of the cursor. So now I'm in insert mode, and now I'm ready to insert a character. So I'm going to type a 1. OK. And then I type. Uh, so now I've entered the character that I want. So I can continue typing if I had more characters. But I'm done. So um, I need to get out of insert mode. To do that, I'm going to hit the escape key. And so that will get you back into the editing mode where you can move around the file folder. Now it turns out that this line right here, we don't need that line, this blank line, um, for this kind of calculation. So I'm just going to type DD, which deletes a whole line of whatever line you happen to be on. So I've deleted that whole line. And so now I'm going to type escape. Now, no, I'm good. OK, so now I need to save this file. So I'm going to type a shift and a ZZ, and that will save the files. Now I have my new file all saved, and it should be good to go. So now we are ready to run games. So make sure you're, you are located in the uh, folder that contains your input file. So I'm going to type ls. Yep, there's my input file. Now we're going to type the command to run games. So you're going to type a forward slash. USR forward slash local L O C A L slash games G A M E S S it's two S's slash run G M S and then a space. So um, I'll tell you about what all this means in just a second. So now we need to give it the name of the input file without the dot INP. So I'm going to select that, right click, bring up my window, paste selection, there we go, and a space. Now we're going to hit the greater than key, the ampersand, 
and uh, now we need to type another file name, our output file name. So I'm going to select this first part of the file name, right click, select paste selection, and now I'm going to add a suffix and append .log for the name of that file, and an ampersand at the end. So let me tell you what all this means. This first bit here with all the slashes, that is the pathway through several different directories from the top of the file system to this one program that I want to run. So I want to run this program, Run Games. That's a special program that's going to set up some variables for us and then call the main games program. But it needs to know the name of your input file, and so you give it the name of the input file, but without the .inp, it's going to know to look for that. Then this ampersand, this greater than symbol and ampersand, tells the program that any output, any standard output generated by this program, just stick it in this file that we're going to give a name for. And it could be whatever we want, but it's uh, standard in games to call your output files log files. So all of the output from games is going to go into this text file. This last ampersand says to run the program in the background. If you don't type that, then um, you're going to have to wait for games to stop running before you can type any more commands in the command line. Okay, so we should now be ready to um, hit enter. Although I just ran this job a little bit ago and I forgot to do something that you won't need to do. So I'm going to actually go and run real quickly, go and do that. Uh, but you won't need to do that. So um, let me go and do that. So CD. So I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup from this last job that I ran. All right, so now I'm back in the water directory and I'm ready to run games. And so I'll just do all that stuff that I told you about before. Okay, now I'm going to hit the enter key and off we go. This number right here is the process ID number for this program. And if you just hit enter, eventually it will come back and tell you that the program's done. Now if you're running a big long calculation, this may take a while. Um, but eventually it will spit back that it is done. You can always check by typing PS, and that will list all processes that you are currently running. All right. So if you see your process ID and something that says games, this file, um, then you'll know that you still have a job running. All right, so I'm going to type LS. And lo and behold, here is our log file. So this is going to contain all of the output of our uh, games program. And so in the next video, we're going to dig into this file and learn about what information it has.